Hello everyone, it's Tana and welcome back to the channel. We are working with this month's release. We have Clarence Surfing, Clarence Coffee, and Beach Background, along with the Nutty Stencil, which has two layers. I already have my images all colored and cut out. And we're going to use the stencil here, and I decided to go with some rainbow today. Now I have every color up on the screen for you. And since the stencil has two layers, it will be two of each color. One lighter version and one darker version. And we're going to speed through this pretty quickly. I have, I've been on another uh, Catherine Pooler ink kick lately. I just love the range of colors I have with having the whole collection. So some of my favorite colors I used in the rainbow. Uh, Serenade and Drive-In are two of my favorite purples. And Lime Ricky is one of my favorite greens. But now with the new colors out, who knows? I may have some new favorites. So I did screw up a little bit. I put the blue in the wrong spot and ended up going over it with the purple, but it all worked out okay. And now we're going to go over it with the second layer here. And I just listed all those colors for you at once. And I really love the way this stencil looks with a rainbow of colors. I think it turned out really super cute. And this card is going to be an infinity, I believe it's called, shaker card. It's not going to have any edges. And we're going to use a piece of, not acetate, but like the cellophane wrappings that come around your stencils and stamps. And it was my first time doing this method. I, it, was fairly easy. It took a little bit of a cutting a couple times to get it to fit the way it, it should fit. Uh, the one piece of advice I have is do not tape it to the back of your card panel too tightly or you won't be able to fill it. So I have the Happy and Birthday die cuts from Rabbit Hole Designs and some Simon Says Stamp uh, Holographic Rainbows cardstock, which is super pretty. And I cut out both of those words. And now I'm going to start, I started to put my cellophane onto the card by doing it uh, using double-sided uh, tape on the bottom and then realized that I forgot that I was gluing my word to the inside of the panel, not the outside. So I'm using a ruler to make sure that it all lines up evenly. And then I move the ruler down. I had to move it down to the very bottoms of the P and Y so that I had room for my D and H to sit on the card without running into the top word. And I, this card, when, it, when you shake it and the sequins and everything are spread all over the card, looks quite busy. But I do like the rainbow theme. I think next time I do a rainbow card like this, I think I might stick with one color sequin and seeds. But... I still like the way it turned out. So here I put, I use the tape on the two sides and the bottom. You want to leave the top open so you can fill it. And I already had an assortment of rainbow colored sequins in there. And I used some little orange rabbit heads from the Halloween mix from Rabbit Hole Designs as the orange. It was literally the only orange sequins I had. And then once you get everything in there that you wanted in there, you can tape the top. And now I'm putting some 2-inch scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive on the back. But I'm also going to add glue to make sure it stays adhered onto the front of the card base and nothing falls out over time. So I'm going to use some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive for that. And like I said, make sure you don't put your cellophane on too tight because it, I did have a hard time shaking these back and forth. They move. But it takes a little bit of effort. I also glued the squirrel on, to, on top of the shaker and then that card was done. So moving on to the second card here. I really love this beach background. This time I stamped it out with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm going over it with some clear embossing powder. I also did the top part of the beat, the ocean background again so I could get the mountains and the palm trees and then two of the seagulls. And we're gonna do a little bit of watercoloring with the Catherine Pooler inks. So I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do a sunset type 
background. So we're going to turn the mountains, the palm trees, and the seagulls into more silhouettes than anything else. And then I'm going to start with my sunset. So I looked on Google at some images to get some inspiration for the order of the colors that I wanted to use. And then I just started using my small paintbrush to spread them out along the ocean. And I believe I used at least two of every color except the orange. And then I did like three variations of the purple, which worked out okay when I was painting on the ocean. But when it came to ink blending on the panel that was going to be the sky part of the sunset and, st and not the reflection, it just seemed like even with the tiny rabbit hole brushes, it just I didn't have enough room on my panel to get all the colors in there that I wanted to use. Uh, it did turn out pretty good, but it was a little hard to kind of blend those colors together one into another. But this card came along pretty quickly for as much as there was, as, as involved as it was, excuse me. And I did go over the layers a couple times and then heat set it with my heat gun. I just didn't show that. Now I'm going to go over the tops of the waves. I kind of looked, it looked to me like it was too one dimensional. The sunset kind of spread across the waves also and I didn't think about that until it was too late but putting the white foam onto the waves kind of gave it a little bit more dimension and I think it still looks okay. I mean, homemade cards aren't perfect, right guys? Tell me though in the comments below how you would make that sunset knowing that those waves are in the foreground. Would you add just purple to the waves? Would you do it the way I did it? Or do you have another idea on how to do it? So I'm gonna quick, very quickly go over each of these inks on a piece of Bristol Smooth with my tiny itty bitty blending brushes that I can never remember, quite remember the name of or get it correct. But I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. And the same colors that I used when I watercolored the reflection. And at first it doesn't look like much, especially since I show you guys that I'm laying down the color, but I don't show you guys blending back and forth until I get it dark enough and blended enough. I uh, just finished putting the ink to the background and then jump to it being finished and getting sparkly. Yes, we're adding sparkle. So I have Avriel's sparkle spray here and then Imagine Crafts sparkle spray as well. Sprayed that, heat set it, and now we're going to mark where I want the waves in the ocean to be so I can trim it down to properly fit the card panel. And sometimes I have a habit of cutting it too short, so I just wanted to make sure there with that last cut. And this is the reason I stamped out this panel, not just for the palm trees, but so I could have a little bit higher of a mountain. So I offset that just enough where it looks like there's more to the mountains in the background. And I'm gonna add my seagull here. <clears throat> now this is my first time using these dies. I forget what they are called, but I will list them in the description box below. But they're supposed to make him move, jiggle, wave back and forth, depending on which die you used. I've never used them before. And I used the wrong one, guys. I'm going to have to practice with these. I wanted him to kind of bounce back and forth on the waves, but he literally does a full 360, and we can't have that when the card goes in the mail. So I kind of, he does move a little bit still, but I kind of had to put a sentiment under there, a sentiment strip, so that he wouldn't do a flip. Because nobody wants Clarence under the ocean waves. I doubled up my foam tape here to make sure there was room for this little plastic snap button. You glue the one part to the image you're using. The other part goes behind your card panel, kind of like the penny on a slider, and then you snap them together. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue on top of the double height adhesive foam tape, sorry. And then I'm gonna place that on the card. 
I'm going to have a dark gray card base with a black mat. So I'll layer that up with some double-sided tape. And here is my sentiment. I believe it says surfing by to say hi, which comes with Clarence surfing. And I put foam tape on it, even though there was already foam tape, because one, I'm not afraid of height, and two, it was the only way that it was going to keep Clarence from going under the water. <laughs> so, and then I glued the whole panel to the card base. And that is it for the second card, guys. I hope you like what you saw in today's video. Don't forget to sign up for the Rabbit Hole Designs email so you can be aware of new releases and inspiration. And also check out the Rabbit Hole Designs on Instagram for even more inspiration throughout the month. And we'll see you next time, guys.